what, what are the most common questions that you get asked? Several options that you can get it when you want to move into Panama. Having assets here in Panama on the corporation is easier for them. You don't want to buy a property that at the very end you are going to realize that it's something wrong with the property and has been sized. It has to be clear. Otherwise, immigration can deny the application. Because if they leave the country without this multiple entrance visa, the fine is $2,000. My guest today is not an expat. He is a Boquete resident that has been living here for how many, how many years? Well, my whole life I have been living oh, here you're, because you're, you were born here. You were born yes, here. Yes, I, I was born here in Alto Lino. Uh, in Alto Lino, an, an area of Boquete that we can talk about later. He has been yeah. practicing law for almost how many years? Uh, since 2003. Since 2003, so 17, 17 years. years. Law. I know him because he's a, an, an attorney here, very well famous for his work ethic and for his general ethic as a lawyer. And because he's a father of a high, high school friend of mine. My guest today's name is Eric Quintero. Thank you for being here with us today. How are you, Eric? I am fine. It's my pleasure to also be uh, this morning sharing some experience uh, from me as a local attorney. Good, good. So you told us that you lived here, that yeah, you've been living here since you were born. So uh, what, what's, what's your story? Did you study here? Because I know as an architect, I know that lawyer is also a licensed profession that you need to be, that you need to study in Panama to be licensed here. So did you study here in Boquete, in, in David, or you moved to Panama City? Okay, first of all, uh, all my uh, elementary and high school was uh, doing here in Boquete. Then I went to David to start in my first career. Law is my second career. My first career was a technician in civil construction. I worked 24 years in that area, in hydroelectric project, uh, sugar milk, and as a supervisor of uh, electrical lines constructions. Wow. Then in, then in 1998, I decided to go back to the school and I took the decision to study law. So law is my second career. I have been practicing law since 2003. And, and um, do you remember what, 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 did, what was the thing that decided to go to law, to practice huh. law? Well, I because my first career was a technician in civil construction i decided to go back to the engineering school with my goal to get a degree as an engineer but i when i went to the university they explained to me that first of all i need to update my uh, career as a technician so i have to take all the subject that has been updated around 20 subjects and then I was uh, able to start the uh, civil engineering career. So, it's like so for, over. Me, for me, that was too much. <laughs> yeah. For everybody, to for 20, everybody that, that's too much. Yeah, to study 20 subjects and then start a new career. So I, I don't know. At that point, I took the decision that I want something new and I decided to go to the law school. I studied law at the um, Latina University in David. Mm -hmm. So I have been uh, doing all my career here in David. I just took one course that was online, the Legal English Seminar from a school in New York City. It was online course. Okay. So, so that's how you learned that is my bike. And briefly, and that is my your background. specialty as as lawyer. Well, as lawyer, I connect very well with the um, real estate business because I am a realtor with license. Then after being an attorney, I decided to, to take the course to be a licensed realtor. So this connect very well with the civil law regarding to promise and buy and sells uh, 
uh, agreement, and here is something common. People come here looking for properties, and this is my expertise. Okay, so you know English, you go into the land, uh, land area, the, the real estate area of, of, of law, and you combine it with your experience as, as realtor. And uh, I, I'm guessing, because English opens a lot of doors, you focus on, on also people that are moving here from the United States or from, from Canada or from an English spoken country, right? Yes. Uh, also, when people come here, fair of all, they have the option to buy a property, even to be a legal Panamanian resident. But if, if they want to become a Panama, permanent Panamanian resident, of course, we need to go through the process of the immigrations. This is something that I handle also for uh, most of my clients when they want to come here for, uh, to be a permanent resident. So your specialty is helping people like me because I'm doing the same thing, but with the construction and the architecture side, but you do that with the law and your, the, the real estate aspect, right? So yeah, but I am most focused with the law. I have my license of realtor and I keep the license updated, but really I have been moving more with the legal procedure of buying properties or getting permanent residency here in Panama than exercising my realtor business. I see, I see. So give us a little insight uh, of, of, of that, that procedure, of that uh, uh, process for moving here. Uh, first of all, uh, while we were talking about uh, doing this interview, uh, we talked a, a few about, we, we talked about a few subjects, a few topics, and we mentioned about uh, residency and citizenship. What's the difference about, about that? Okay, first of all, you need to get the residency. Okay. Residency is the legal status that, that a, anyone who hasn't been born here in Panama want to get a permanent residency here. So we need to apply at immigration for getting this uh, permanent permit. After being here under this permanent permit for five years, then you can apply for citizenship. Citizenship is which allow you not only to be a legal resident in Panama, but also to be entitled to get Panamanian passport. You get also a Panamanian ID, which is the different than the one that every permanent residency gets. The permanent residency get is cedula. But the ones that get the citizenship will get a, a one which is N with the letter N. Uh -huh. This means that it's a national permanent resident. I see. Okay, and, and how long does it take the residency part? I mean, the, the paperwork. Okay, after we submit the application and the immigration, this is going to take less than six months, they are giving the applicant a temporary card, which is valid for six months. On, only under the very special circumstances, like the one that we are having right now with COVID, they are allowed to extend the validity of the temporary cards. Uh, the process starts when the one who wants to be a permanent resident of Panama start getting all the documents. The most important is that if, if the person is an American citizen, citizen need to get um, the FBI report. It has to be clear, no arrest. Otherwise, immigration can deny the application. So if the FBI report and a letter either from uh, social security or a private entity in uh, America or your country of permanent residence, which show that you are receiving at least $1,000 per month. If you are a single person, if you are a couple, increase this in $250 for every dependent. For example, if you are a couple, then at least the monthly income is $1,250. We are gonna need these documents 2,500, I think. 
1,000 for one person. Uh -huh. 1,000 for one person. 250, 250 dollars for every dependence. Let's gonna say is the husband and wife. Uh -huh. Is 1,250 dollars. Uh, this I is see. the net, the net monthly incomes that they need to show up at the immigration for them to allow to uh, start the process and clear FBI report. There are several documents, but this this is not too much important because you are going to get the document here, our health certificate, photos, copies of, uh, complete copies of your passport. There is a list, but the there most is important list. is, yeah, okay. but the okay. most important is the FBI report and the, uh, and the uh, marriage certificate, if you are a couple, the letter of your pension, and the FBI report. Okay, we could talk about the list and, and have it written. So people can download it in the in the link. We can put a link here for people to download that list. Okay. See. At some, at some point, I can send you the list of the, all the requirements. Great, great. And uh, <laughs> once the process is submitted, what's what's in for for the per person that's applying for the citizenship in terms of what does he, what does what does that person needs to do? or if it's just uh, a lawyer's job to keep following up and do that, does the person needs to be present and need to be uh, keeping, the, keeping an eye on the process or that's just okay. the lawyer's job? Okay, to be clear, we need to start the residency process. It's not citizenship. Oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot. I, I said okay. citizenship, I mean residency. Yes. So, when we have all the documents ready, the power of attorney, um, the complete copies of the passport, the letters that um, evidence how much is your monthly income, FBI report and memory certificate, we need to get an appointment with the immigration office in David. So, the client has to go together with the attorney. We are going to submit all this paperwork to the uh, officer at immigration. They are gonna, if everything is correct, they are gonna allow the registration. So they will fill a form with all the details of the applicant, each one. They need to provide a, a photo. And then if everything is correct, they are gonna stamp this fingerprint and to sign the form. After this, at the same, moment we are going to apply for the permanent residency we submit all the documents to the immigration and after they receiving all of them they are going to create a file in the website of immigration and then they are going to allow to take the picture for the temporary cards which i told you is going to be valid for six months that's it the process has been started and they will send the file to Panama City. Maybe now they are going to be some change because at the very end before, the client has to make a trip to Panama City to, to get the permanent residency. But because of the COVID situation, they are changing the rules and they are going to be uh, giving the permanent card here in David. So at the end, the client has not to move to Panama City to get the permanent card. Good. But here in David. So the process will be done together, clients with the attorney at the same office in David. And that gives you six months, right? Yes. Normally they are approving this three months and a half, four months. And, and meanwhile, you can stay here in Panama during that six months. Yes, of course. They will give you the temporary card, which will be the current yeah. document that you will use here to move all around the country. The client just to have to keep in mind that if for any reason they want to leave the country before the six months, we need to apply for a multiple entrance visa, this, which is an authorization that immigration give to the applicant for leaving the country during the time that the visa is it's been in process. Because if they leave the country without this multiple entrance visa, the fine is $2,000. So it would be better to apply for this authorization just in case you need it 
than to pay a fine of two thousand dollar. Yeah, of course, it, of course. And and how much is that application? That how much extra is that? Um, multiple. Two hundred fifty plus fifty dollar that immigration charge for the total is three hundred dollars per applicant. Per applicant. So yes. it's, it's, if it's a couple, it's six hundred. Yes, that's legal fees plus immigration cost. Okay. Okay, and uh, after that six months, you get your re your residency. Mm -hmm. I've seen, and maybe you can answer me that question. I've seen a lot of people that put into a into company names their lands, their everything, the, their cars. Uh, could you explain me at least for me because that's my question. That is not on the list of questions, but I want to know what's the purpose of that. Because I've seen that with enterprises just for protection, uh, but I don't know uh, why expats would like to do that. Yeah, yeah. Having assets here in Panama on the corporation is easier for them because you can avoid problems, but you need to be careful. You cannot have the house or business or properties under the same corporation that you have your banking accounts. If you have a car and the car is registered in your personal name, but all the possessions are under the corporation and there is a traffic accident, the defendant can claim against whatever you own under your own name. I see. But no for whatever is owned by the company. So I most see. of the purpose of them is to keep separate the access that they really want to protect under the company with the personal asset. I see. This is, this is one of the most important difference that having everything registered under their own name and also for inheritance uh, purpose is easier with a corporation than having under their own names because of an inheritance process here in Panama can take two years at least. And okay. with a company, it's easier. So as soon as you start the residency process, um, you start doing, you start buying your assets here under company names. You can create a company whenever you want. You don't need to be a permanent resident to have property here in Panama, either on your own name or under a corporation. I see, I see. So, okay, I'm kind of understanding now. And, and when, you, when you buy, uh, so, so you can do that, meanwhile, you're applying for, for the residency. Yes, totally up to the client. If the client wants, first of all, to come and be a permanent resident and then start buying properties and selling company, it's totally up to the client. But if they want first to start buying properties or selling companies without being a permanent residency, this is totally legal here. I see. I see. Okay, and, and after the residency happens, um, People start buying their their land and or, or before, and uh, what's next for them? What what are what what's next for them? I mean, I mean, they can start living here like right away. So the process starts in six. It start to finish for living in Panama. It's six months. Yes, after they get the permanent residency here in Panama, they are legal here. It's gonna be totally up to them if they wanna um, apply for citizenship. Apply, yes, applying for there are a few client that took the decision, maybe for personal reasons, that they want to become a legal Panamanian citizens. And they uh, start the process for that. What, what are the most common questions that you get asked? One. Um, How to be a permanent Panamanian resident. That we have already explained here. That's yes. the number one question and we already answered. What's question number two? the best way to buy property here in Panama. Okay. They need, they need to be very careful when they are gonna buy property here. Normally, 
when they provide us with all the information of the property that they want to buy, we make a search because you need to be sure that you are going to buy a free and clear property. You don't want to buy a property that at the very end you are going to realize that it says something wrong with the property and has been sized either by the government or for any entity that has any claim with the uh, real owner of the property. So we make a search, being sure that the property is clear, and then you can start the process for buying the property. First of all, my advice is to sign a permit to buy and sell agreement where the buyer is going to make a 10% deposit. This 10% is uh, of the total price. Okay. What he wants to pay for the property. He will make a down payment of 10%, 10 of that value at the process start. If the parties, parties agree the term that they want to close, either two months, three months, six months, uh, but the property free and clear because there are some times that they want to buy property that there is a mortgage and then we need to cancel the mortgage first, we take longer. But normally you can close a, a buy and sell agreement here in a couple of months, three months, uh, with no problems. Yeah. So the most important is to be sure that the property is free and clear. That is no restriction against the property and the transfer uh, can be done easier. Yeah, I see. And, and, and I want to emphasize on this because as architects, I've seen people buying land and uh, they are, they are, for example, the, 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 the seller says, oh, this is my land, it's up to there, but there is no plan. So once you, that you go to the, to the registration, you see that you, you thought that you were buying something of X size, let's say one acre, and then you have 0.8 or 0.7 of an acre. And uh, that's what I've seen probably as an attorney. Um, I've seen other stuff, but as an attorney, probably you've seen like, oh, uh, this land is second. Uh, it's, 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 uh, how do you call it? Kidnapped? It's adjudicated. Probably you have seen more issues with land. Mm -hmm. uh, dispute between owners. Well, uh, normally, Normally, when you sign a permit to buy and sell agreement, for me as an attorney, it's really important that the buyers have the option to reserve the property. Because what you have been saying, maybe the seller said, I want to say one hectare of the property, but when you are going to really check the blueprint of the property, there, there is not one hectare. So maybe it's a, a good option to reserve the property to be sure that the amount of land that you are buying and there is no problem with the neighbors so the, the lot that you are gonna buy is really the site that you are gonna pay for and there is no problem with the neighbors is that is really important yeah uh what that we, we talk about land but is there any difference between buying uh land versus uh, existing uh property an existing house Okay, yeah, the only thing that we need to be sure is that the house that you are going to buy, it has been declared at the public registry. As we identify the house like improvements. So when you are going to buy, we need to have a value for the land and, and, another another value value the and another value for the house. This is really important because here in Panama, you get uh, exemption on the taxes regarding to the house. So yeah, really, know, depending on the on the how old is the house, there's a for example for brand new houses there's a 20 year tax exemption which means that in 20 years you don't pay any tax at all. Well, the law was modified and right now you will get the, the exemption, but this is gonna depends on the value of the house. Yeah, it, it, if you it, have it, the house, the tax, it's dependent. It's correct me if I'm wrong. The tax depend on the value of the selling price that you are getting so if if for example i ha, uh, eric bought the land and he builds a house and he spends 120 but he then decides to buy uh to, to sell at 200 and i buy at 200 my taxes will be for the 200 amount 
at that time. And if Eric lived in his house 10 years, I get, I just get an extension for 10 years because it is counting the time since the house was built. Yeah, you are correct. The only thing that we need to be sure is that the value, for example, when I build the house, I declare the value. The government will give me the tax exemption considering the value that I declare. But if I sell the house before the 20 years tax exemption, the new buyer will get the exemption. But if the value increase for any reason, there is a process that the, we need to request to the income tax office to transfer the exemption, not only the, in the uh, former value, but in the actual one. And you get the exemption. Even if the house, even the before, the, the, if you sold your house after 20 years, I buy it, what's my time extension? It's going to be 20. For example, Again. if I, no, sorry, 20 total. For example, if I build the house and after 10 years I decide to sell the house, the new buyer is going to have 10 years. Okay. okay. Total is 20, but uh, maybe in the future we are going to need to talk about different topic, topic because the exemption actually is according with the value that you are going to declare. For example, house up to $120,000 will get 20-year tax exemption. But if the value is higher than $120,000, they are going to get 15, they are going to get 10, they are going to get 5. The higher the value that the owner declared as improvement, the lower the tax exemption the government will, give, will be giving to the owner. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, for example, one million dollar house. That will be five years. Yeah. Could be. Depending yes. on, on the depending on, on what's in the document, I am suppose. Yes, 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 yes. For example, uh, over the seven hundred thousand dollar is five years. Okay, maybe we can put that law here for people to download. Probably it will be in Spanish, but still it's good to have that document with you. Okay. Uh, so that's question number two. How first was the residency? Two, how to buy how to Property. buy land? Yes. What's question number three? How they are gonna be um Living here, if they have a frame time to be in Panama or moving outside of Panama with no restriction. I am explaining to them that after getting a permanent residency here in Panama, they are allowed to leave Panama, but not stay outside of Panama more than two years. Mm. Otherwise, they will lose the permanent residency and they will become again a tourist. Ah, I see. Yeah, they need but to be here. But you can come and you can stay for a short period of time. They the can stay here forever. To your time. Yeah, they can be here forever. If they took the decision that I have a few clients, yeah, I have a client who told me I am not going to go back anymore to my country. I am going to be living here and that's it. But if they want to leave and I explain to them, okay, be aware that you are going to be outside of Panama for more than two years, Keep in mind that you need to return to Panama before the two years to keep your permanent residency because the government can cancel the residency if you stay outside of Panama for more than two years. I see. And then they also ask about how to keep the taxes updated with the government. The best way to do this, normally I had... Uh, advise them to get an accountant if they really want to have all the taxes with the property updated and have everything in order here with Panama. Okay. okay so those are the three most common questions that you get yes. asked. What, what, what do you do with your clients on your first meeting? What, 
I mean, I'm guessing that they ask you these questions, but in general aspects, how is the, the first meeting with you, with your clients? Um, what, uh, are there any concerns for them that you have seen, that you have seen people with concerns? Well, normally when they are coming uh, here asking for an appointment is because they have made a search previously and they know a specific what they really want. Most of them contact me <clears throat> either by WhatsApp or email uh, informing that they got my contact detail from someone else as a reference and they have a specific question regarding how to move into Panama, how is the immigration process, what about to buy lands here and property and uh, that's it they come already focused on on what they need okay 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 so in summary is there any lesson or advice that you would give to to a, a person that is trying to oh wait i forgot i i had this a question to ask you people from the united states and canada have an easier time moving here because they're in the friendly nation uh, list, right? Yeah, this is this is one of the uh, options to get permanent residency here in Panama. Friendly nations. Is there any, is that easier? I mean, the process that we talk about is for people uh, with friendly nations or is that a general procedure that, that anyone can do? Okay. Uh, with we we'll talk about a general procedure. There are a specific because there are several options that you can get it when you want to move into Panama. Uh, friendly nation is one of the options. It's more complicated, it's more expensive, but give the option to be a permanent Panama resident. Is there is an advantage of choosing the, the friendly nations uh, application? Yeah, of course, Friendly Nation gives you the opportunity either to have a business here or to get a work permit. Okay. It's more complicated because we need to involve other office, like the labor office, like the uh, social security. But uh, if you really want to go through all these process, yeah, this, this is also an option. When people come here asking for a friendly nation visa it's because they are planning either uh, okay, they are too young, yes, to have a business or because they are really young and they don't have a pension, but they really want to get a permanent residency here. Mm, I see. So uh, we, we could say that this apply, I mean, for 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 the, the first procedure that we talk about is for retired expats, and this is for like general expats. Yeah, retired, yeah. For that reason, I explained to you at the beginning, with the retired, we are going to need the letter from Social Security or a private entity as evident that they are receiving these monthly incomes. I see. Yeah. And uh, what, what, um, what, what are the, the countries on the Friendly Nations visa? Oh, they are a lot. The nation, uh, residency. The countries, the, I can say, this. yeah, there is a list, a list, a huge amount of countries that they can uh, apply here. The their citizens can apply here under the Friendly Nations visa. Okay. I think they are more than thirty countries. More than thirty countries. Yes. Okay, we'll have all that information in the in the link in the description. So for people uh, want want to know, they could move, and if their country is on that list, they they yeah. they will know. Okay. Yes. And uh, final questions for this interview are: uh, What's a, a summary? What's an advice that you would give to people that are trying to move to Boquete? Okay, my advice will be, first of all, try to get reference from permanent residents here in Panama, residents here in Panama, that they really can explain to you how is the life here in Panama, and if you are going to choose Boquete, you are going to have a 
plenty sources of information. Be sure that you want to be a permanent residency here in Panama, then try to get um, information regarding to the professionals that you want to help you handling all the process. Get a quote in advance to avoid surprise in both sides. So the professional is not going to say that right now you are trying to get advantage of me, charging more than what you told me since the beginning. It will be better to have everything clear. So get good reference of the professional that you want to handle your business here in Panama. For me, it's really important to get an approach like a meeting. After that meeting, it's totally up to the client if he feels comfortable using my service or not. So, for example, if someone could come as a tourist and say, oh, I would like to come here, I would like to live here. I have people that they come as a tourist, they get an appointment to investigate how is the process to be a permanent residence and um, at the end it's totally up to them if they want to move in a near future or if they are going to wait for long-term decisions. Okay, I see. Okay, I think we have, we have covered a lot of information. If someone is watching this video, I would like to have more questions uh, to Eric. We'll put here uh, a, a link We put here the, the email of Eric here for you to, to talk to him directly, ask him questions, or if you like to do a second part of this interview, please also let me know. I think this is very informative for the persons that are trying to move here. I've always helped people, but again, with my uh, experience as architect and uh, builder, now Eric does it as a lawyer and realtor. So, so thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you to Eric for, for sharing his information with us. Probably we'll see you in the future. Eric doesn't live far away from my house. I always run into town and I, and I see him or driving around. So he's a very accessible person. If you would like to have a job uh, done with Eric, uh, you, already have your, you already have known him through this interview and you'll have his, his information, his contact information in the link in the description of this video. So thank you again, people, for watching this video. Thank you, Eric. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.